Okay, so let's talk about adding storage to our Ubuntu server. Now, on my little uh, VM here, I've added a, another VHD just so we can walk through the process of discovering and then creating a partition and then mounting it so that we can use it. Okay, um, so I'm going to start. There's a couple of commands we can use here. If you remember previously, df-h, and this isn't one we're going to use for this, but df-h shows me my disk free space in a human readable format. And this is going to show us all of my devices and so forward slash dev mapper Ubuntu VG. And then it's going to show me here in this column, it's going to show me where it's mounted on. And I'm, we're also going to see that we have dev SDA1, dev SDA2. And just keep those in mind because I'm going to do an fdisk, I'm going to sudo fdisk, and I want to view or list my drives. And so we're going to see here we have device disk F, uh, dev SDA, and then you're going to see the volumes we have on it starting, ending, number of sectors, total size. And then we're going to see the new disk I just added, dev sdb. It's 127 gigabytes. It's a virtual disk, but we haven't actually done anything with it yet. Another way we can look at this, by the way, is lsblk. And that's going to show us this nice little breakdown, sda. You see we have sda123. One is mounted to, so here in this column, over here on the right, we've got a mount point. So we've got SDA1 is mounted to boot EFI, SDA2 is mounted to the boot partition, and SDA3, that's actually part of a logical volume group. We're going to take a look at that a little bit later. But then you'll notice SDB, we got nothing. So I'm going to start setting this up using fdisk. So I'm going to sudo fdisk, and then I'm going to specify the drive I want to look at, and it's going to be dev. So forward slash dev identifies the device. SDB is going to be the drive that I want to work with. So welcome to the fdisk utility. Changes will remain in memory only until you decide to write them. Make sure that you write them if you want it to take effect, but be careful. You get the idea. So if I type an M here, this is going to give me my help. And you're going to see all of our different commands. Create a new partition, uh, print the partition table, change the partition type, uh, create new uh, empty GPT partition tables, uh, create a new empty uh, DOS partition or Sun partition table. So I want to create a new empty GPT partition table for this. So that's going to be G. Oh, by the way, I didn't want to point you out here. Save and exit. We can write the table to disk and exit, or we can dump changes. Remember, it just said things are going to be stored in memory until we actually write them out. So if we quit without saving, nothing actually takes effect. So I'm going to create a new GPT partition table. And that creates a GPT disk label. And it gives me a GUID for that, which is a way of uniquely identifying it. So that's cool. That gives me my new partition table. And then I want to create a new partition. So that's going to be N to create a new partition. Now you can specify the partition number. I'm going to go ahead and leave it default. And this is going to specify where we want to begin at. So our first sector is number 2048, and that's my default. So just hit under there. And then I can set my last sector the number of sectors or size. Now the default is to just use everything. It'll create one partition for the entire drive. And that's what I want here is I just want one partition. So I'm just going to hit enter on the default and that creates a partition uh, one of type Linux file system size 127 gigabytes. All right, so if I'm happy with that, I can do W to write out my changes and exit. Now, that gives me a partition table. Let me do the LSBLK again. And you're going to see now we have SDB, and then we've got a partition. SDB is a disk. SDB1 is a partition on that disk. So next step is to do MKFS, or Make File System. Now I'm going to do .ext4. If you want to do a different file system, you do dot .whatever that file system is. And I'm going to specify the 
partition that I want that to go on. So it's going to be SDB1. So here's my command MKFS uh, or make file system ext.ext4 dev SDB1. And let me sudo that. And that's going to create my file system for me. <clears throat> now, at this point, let me do uh, an lsplk again. And it's going to show me my partition. If I do an fdisk l, I'm going to have to sudo that, sudo fdisk l. And we're going to see dev sdb. We're going to see here at dev sdb1, the size, it's a Linux file system. Okay. At this point, it's actually not accessible yet. In fact, if I do df-h, disk free in human readable format, you're going to see I have dev sda2, sda1. I've got my uh, logical volume. I have no dev sdb mounted. So I've created a file system. I just haven't mounted it anywhere. Now, in Windows systems, once you create the partition, it's going to, by default, it's going to assign that partition a drive letter. It can also assign it a mount point. In Linux, we use mount points, not drive letters. So what I need to do is create a location where I'm going to mount this drive. So I am going to make a directory. I actually have to sudo this. Actually, let me clear the screen, make this easier. There we go make directory that just said i'm gonna have to sudo this make directory and i want to create a directory i'm going to call, put it in my mount folder so we already have an mnt folder that's off of our root in fact let's real quick ls-l forward slash root and you're going to see right here is mnt and this is a folder that has nothing in it <clears throat> It's a folder that's created specifically for us to mount drives into. Now, I don't have to mount to that MNT folder, right? I could mount anywhere else. I could put it in somebody's home folder and give them a bunch of space that they can use there. Um, I can put it you know, off of the root folder. I could put it anywhere, right? So I can mount this anywhere. And when somebody goes to that directory, that mount point, they're going to be working off of a new physical drive. So I'm going to put it in the mount folder at the moment just because it's going to be nice and easy for us to see. So I'm going to sudo make directory in my mount folder. I'm going to create HDD2. Now if I ls forward slash mnt forward slash HDD2, it should show me nothing because I just created it, which is great because I need to mount to an empty folder. I can't mount to a folder that already exists, that already has data in it. Let me rephrase it that way. I can't mount to a folder that already has data in it. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to mount forward slash MNT forward slash HDD2. So that's going to be my mount point. And then I'm going to mount, whoops, I just did that backwards. Mount, and I'm probably going to have to sudo this too sudo mount dev sdb1 there we go sdb1 and i'm going to mount that to forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 and that's going to mount that so now if i do df dash h i should see right here dev sdb1 is mounted to forward slash mnt hdd2 now i'm going to go over there. So I'm going to cd forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2. There we go. Now there's still nothing here. This is pretty much brand new. I've got lost and found, but that's about it. So I'm going to create a new folder here in kdir, and we're just going to call this a data folder. Pseudo mkdir data. And then I'm going to change so that um, I'm going to add read and write permissions. In fact, I'm just going to give all permissions to everybody on the data folder. So I'm going to do sudo chmod777, which is going to be read, write, and execute for the owner, 
the group and everybody else on the data folder. And that's now going to show me everyone has full permission. Okay, I'm going to change location back to my home folder. And if I do an LSL MNT HDD2, we'll see that that's there. All right, so I want to unmount. So it's sudo unmount or umount forward slash MNT forward slash HDD2. Now that actually unmounts it. So if I try to find data there again, we're going to see that there's nothing there. Now I can remount it. So that would be sudo mount dev sdb1 to forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2. And now if I do a ls, you'll see that we have the data back. So basically I mount it. That makes it available. df dash h will show that again available right here and then we can see the files okay now <clears throat> here's where we're at we have taken a hard drive we've added it to our system we've used fdisk to set up the hard drive create a partition on it we've created a file system on it with uh, mkfs and then we've mounted it so that we can use it now here's our challenge with that Anytime I want to use that, that's great. But if my system reboots, I no longer have that. It goes away. That's because when you reboot the system, it mounts things out of another file, etc, fs tab or file system table. And that's where it mounts everything, what defines what we mount. So what I need to do is add this to the etc fs tab file in order for it to mount every time my system boots up. But that's going to be the subject of our next video.